Let's talk about bond energies. Get out your science notebook. Let's get started. Here's the essential question. How can we calculate the energy of your reaction from the total bond energies? Well, let's start by looking at a familiar reaction. Here's the combustion of methane. You might recall that combustion reactions need a fuel and oxygen in order to work. So let's take our methane molecule and our two oxygen molecules and get started. I'm gonna light a match in order to get this reaction to get going. When the reaction begins, these reactant molecules break apart their bonds and the atoms rearrange themselves to form molecules such as carbon dioxide and water. Now, combustion reaction also releases tons of energy in the process. From this reaction, we learn a lot about making and breaking chemical bonds. Typically in a chemical reaction, the reactants have to absorb energy in order to break those bonds. And when they rearrange themselves and form new bonds, lots of energy is released from that. Now for combustion reactions specifically, they release more energy when they absorb, but that's not true for all reactions. Bond energy is an important concept when we talk about chemical reactions and the amount of energy they either absorb or release. We can take a look at each of the individual bonds and see their bond energies. Now, these bond energies are rated in kilojoules or the amount of energy per mole of the substance. Now, it's important to understand that it takes the same amount of energy to break a bond as it releases when it forms. So these bond energies can be used on both sides of the chemical reaction equation. You might have noticed in that previous table that some bonds have a single line between them, some have a double, or some have a triple. These are different types of bonds. Typically, a single bond is between two elements when they share two electrons. We designate that with one line. These types of bonds have low bond energies. Sometimes elements can come together and form double bonds. These are where four electrons are shared between atoms, and there's a medium amount of bond energies. When six electrons are shared between atoms, there's a high amount of bond energy needed to either make this, to, to break this bond or released when the bond is formed. Now we can take all of those bond energies and determine the total reaction energy by following this equation. To determine the total reaction energy, we typically add up all of the energy of all the bonds broken in the reactants and subtract the total energy of all the bonds formed in the products. Now, when we calculate out our answer, depending on the sign of our answer, if, it, if it's a negative sign, then we know that energy is released by that total reaction. If it's a positive sign, then energy is absorbed by the reaction. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we have a question that says, how much energy is transferred in the reaction of CH4 plus 2O2 gives us CO2 and 2H2O? This is that combustion reaction of methane that we saw earlier. We also want to know if this energy is released or absorbed. Well, let's take a look at the reactants first. Specifically, we want to know what happens when all the bonds are broken in terms of energy. Well, I see here that there are four H hydrogen to carbon bonds that we can see in methane. And there are two oxygen double bonds as well. If we take a look at our bond energy chart here and we add up all of those bonds, including all the multiples of those bonds, we can determine how much energy is it takes to break all of those bonds. Now let's take a look at the products. All of the bonds formed, remember these release energy. I see that there are two sets of double bonds between oxygen and carbon, and there are four sets of single bonds between hydrogen and oxygen. If I use my bond energy chart and add all those bonds together, I can determine the total amount of energy that's released by the products. Now to determine the total energy of this entire reaction, I'm gonna take the reactants and subtract the products. This is gonna get my total energy of the reaction. Notice it's a negative value. That means that this energy as a whole releases more energy than it absorbs. And that makes sense. This is a combustion reaction and combustion reactions typically release tons of energy in the form of heat and light. All right, here's a student practice for yourself. Same question, but this is a different reaction. See if you can solve it yourself. Pause the video right now and see if you can do it. Did you try this reaction yourself? I hope so. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. Let's first calculate the bonds broken. 
I see that there are six single bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen. And if I use my table and add up all of those bonds together, I can get the total amount of energy that it takes to break these bonds. Now let's take a look at the products, the bonds formed. I see that there is one triple bond between two nitrogens and three single bonds between the hydrogens. So I'm gonna add up all of these bond energies. Remember, it these are energies that is released by this chemical reaction. Now, if I take the total bonds broken and subtract the total bonds form, I can get the total reaction energy. This one specifically absorbs energy. There's 16 kilojoules of energy that needs to be absorbed by this reaction instead of released. Well, that leads us to the end of our notes. Take a moment right now to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize by answering the essential question. Good luck.